That actually would be fun, wouldn't it? <laughs> Reference to yesterday. I know, I know. Letting you down today. Nice to see the packed house today. I'm sure you're all here to see me and not the 72 Dolphins. Um, I actually have a, a little announcement at the top to review with you. I wanted to talk to you a little bit more uh, this afternoon about the president's upcoming bus tour through uh, New York and Pennsylvania, where he is going to talk about uh, his vision for ensuring a better bargain for the middle class. Uh, he's given uh, some speeches already to talk about creating jobs, about improving the housing market. He's going to talk a little bit this week about college affordability. As I mentioned yesterday, never before has getting a college education been more important to ensuring that middle class families have access to economic opportunity. So there are some pretty compelling statistics that you can see behind me uh, about what a problem this is. Average tuition at a public four-year college has more than tripled, tripled over the last three decades, while family incomes have barely increased. The average student today graduates with more than $26,000 in student debt. Now, what we do know is that Americans who are able to get a college education, those who graduate from college, have the power and capacity to earn more, and they have uh, a lower unemployment rate. So the kind of investment that you make in a college education pays off in real economic terms. Now, there's also a study that was published today that shows that the federal government is doing more than ever to open up the door to a college education to middle class families, that the federal government is providing more assistance than ever before. But government assistance can't keep up with skyrocketing costs. So what the president believes that we need to do is we need to fundamentally rethink and reshape the college, the higher education system, and we need to find a way to build on innovation. So the president on this bus tour will lay out some fundamental reforms that would bring real change to the way that we pay for college education in this country. Now, the proposals that the president's going to lay out are not going to be popular with everybody, but they are going to be in the best interest of middle class families. And the president is looking forward to uh, having that discussion over the course of Thursday and Friday, in addition to riding on a bus. So with that, so what are can you tell us what the reforms are? Uh, well, you'll have to wait till Thursday. I don't want to give away the secret now. Please. <laughs> Josh, are you going to have a folder um, uh, sometime before Thursday? Uh, there's a possibility we may do that, so we'll keep you posted. Can you give a sense of if there's things Congress will have to do or if there's executive action? We'll, we'll have more on that this week. It'll be good. Stay tuned. All right. Okay. Julie, I'll give you the first one. Uh, turning to Egypt, yes. Senator Leahy's office uh, told the AP earlier today that the administration informed the Subcommittee on Foreign Operations that the U.S. has stopped military aid to Egypt. The Daily Beast had a similar report. Is this what the administration has told lawmakers? Julie, what I said to you yesterday, and what I – let me start over. What I said yesterday is true today, which is that in early July – the President of the United States directed his national security team to conduct a review of the assistance and aid that we provide to Egypt. This is part of a complex and broad relationship that we have the Egyptians, with the Egyptians. That review that the President ordered in early July has not concluded. And reports to the contrary that – reports – published reports to the contrary that suggest that assistance to Egypt has been cut off are not accurate. But while you're conducting this review, has the aid that's in the pipeline stopped? Well, let's back up and, and do two things here. The first is there are some things that we have announced that affect the aid and assistance relationship that we have with Egypt. For example, the administration about a month ago announced that the scheduled delivery of F-16s had been delayed. Uh, the president announced in a statement yesterday, uh, last week that the joint military operation known as Bright Star had been canceled. So there have been some steps that this administration has taken. But it's important for you and your readers to understand that providing foreign assistance is not like a spigot. You don't turn it off and on or turn it up or down like a faucet. Uh, assistance is provided episodically. 
that it's provided in specific yeah, tranches. And so that, those tranches are under an ongoing review. But while you're undergoing this review, we mm -hmm. do know that there is about a half a billion dollars in military aid that's scheduled to go to the Egyptians by September 30th. That hasn't gone to them yet. Is the policy of the administration that while the aid is under review, you're going to be holding that back, stopping it, and waiting until this review finishes before deciding to send it? There, there is a, an ongoing review of our aid and assistance relationship with Egypt. So you're not saying what Senator Leahy is saying is wrong. He's saying that the aid has stopped. And he also said his, one of his aides told us that this is current practice, this is not necessarily official policy. I just. I'm just trying to understand, mm -hmm. is, is what Senator Leahy said correct? Well, I haven't seen the entirety of Senator Leahy's remarks, well, but what... This is what I'm telling you, that he said that U.S. military aid to Egypt has stopped, it's current practice, not necessarily official policy, and there's no indication of how long it will last. The, the, the aid, our aid and assistance relationship with Egypt is under a review, but it has not been cut off. A decision to cut off aid, yes. a decision to cut off aid would be announced if it were to be announced after that review has been completed. But now that review is being it's been cut off. He's just saying that it's currently stopped. Right. I, I, well, I, I think if I were trying to make the same case that you were making here, um, you would be suggesting that I was engaged in a game of semantics here. I'm trying to be. Like we are kind of engaged well, in a game and of I'm semantics trying to be as so. candid as possible with you about what exactly our policy has been. We have been pretty forthcoming about what our policy is here. We announced publicly the delay in the F-16s. We, uh, the President himself announced publicly the cancellation of the joint military exercises. The President himself publicly directed his administration to conduct a broader review uh, of our aid and assistance to Egypt. And that, that aid and assistance is ongoing. And no determination or conclusion of that review uh, has been uh, has been reached at this point. So the aid and assistance is ongoing. It's being sent. It has not stopped. Well, again, it's not like a. It, it, this is not a a faucet in which you just turn the spigot and uh, assistance continues to flow. Okay. Assistance is provided episodically. Assistance is provided in tranches, uh, and that is that is the way that that this works. So this is not a matter of turning the turning the dial one way or the other. This is a matter of taking a close and careful look at the assistance that the United States provides to our uh, partners in Egypt. And that evaluation is based on a few things. It's based on ensuring that we're in compliance with the law. It, it's based on a, an analysis of the national security interests of the United States of America. That's the focal point of every foreign policy decision that the President makes. It's certainly an important part uh, of this calculation. But it's also affected by the actions taken by the interim Egyptian government. This interim Egyptian government has made promises to transition back to a democratically elected civilian government. The violence that they perpetrated last week and has continued into, at least into the weekend and in the early parts of this week uh, are contrary to that promise. And uh, that factors into our review of this aid and assistance relationship. But to suggest that a decision has been made uh, about that aid and assistance is just not accurate. Well, that's not what Leahy is suggesting. Or it, we're suggesting uh, well, maybe it's not. I haven't seen the statements. But if you're asking me what our policy is, I think I've just tried to explain it to you. Quickly then, um, speaking of the Egyptian military and their actions, they've detained the Supreme Leader of the Muslim Brotherhood. Is there any U.S. reaction to that mm -hmm. development? We, we've spoken out a couple of times, uh, pretty forcefully and directly, about politically motivated detentions. Um, that is not in line with the standard that we expect other governments to uphold in terms of respecting human rights. It's certainly not the standard that the Egyptian people uh, expect of their government in terms of upholding basic human rights. So this is just the latest in, uh, in uh, a series of, of actions that the Egyptian government has taken that doesn't res reflect their commitment to an inclusive political process, to respect for basic human rights like the uh, the right to protest peacefully. Uh, and it certainly is an, uh, is an act that's contrary to a, uh, to a legal system uh, that's insulated from politics. Okay. Thank you, Julie. Roberta? Um, in Mali, a place where the United States was able to make the determination to turn off the spigot of aid, uh, the <laughs> president um, made a <laughs> statement today um, about the elections and yeah. the outcome. 
I'm wondering, I guess, how close the United States is to resuming aid there, to, to making the decisions, determinations to go forward mm -hmm. to resume aid. Uh, I, I know this is something that's currently being evaluated by the State Department. By the, by the State Department and I think at the Department of Defense. So in terms of the logistics that are required there, I'd encourage you to check with them. Okay, so the White House has no comment on whether they, um, the President or the White House would like to see a resume or uh, Just that this is something that's being uh, reviewed by the State Department and the Department of Defense. So if you have questions about the details, I'd encourage you to check with them. Okay, and the other question I have okay. is, um, as you know, um, this fall the President faces the challenge of working, finding a way to work with Congress to keep the government running and make sure the United States can continue to pay, um, repay its debt. So I'm just curious about why he's using his time leading up to that debate to focus on issues like higher education, and jobs and infrastructure, rather than using it to find a way to, to move forward on those immediate fiscal issues, those immediate economic sure. issues. When I, when I say that I genuinely appreciate the question, I genuinely do appreciate this question. Because I do think that it, that it will um, it will provide some insight into you how the president – provide some insight for you about how the president uh, considers these broader issues that will be um, the subject of some debate in the fall about what – how are we going to make sure that, uh, that Congress takes the kinds of steps they should take and put in place the kinds of policies they should put in place to support our economic recovery that's gaining traction. Too often we see Congress – put in place policies that actually undermine that economic recovery. Uh, and threatening a government shutdown or threatening to default on the full faith and credit of the United States of America would undermine uh, the economic recovery that's starting to gain some traction. The way that the President considers these policy questions is through the prism of what's in the best interests of middle class families all across the country. And he believes that we need to offer up a better bargain for middle class families. Um, and that means expanding economic, economic opportunity for middle class families by looking for policies that will uh, create jobs, but also making sure that we put in place policies that will open up the doors to a high quality college education for more middle class families. That is a, that should be a domestic priority. That is a domestic priority of the President's. And our ability to make progress on expanding economic opportunity for the middle class is the President's top domestic priority. And so when we're dealing with these larger budget and economic issues that are related to the fiscal year 2014 budget and the debt ceiling, the President's going to evaluate agreements that we can reach with Congress on those things by what impact they have on the middle class. So I think it's entirely appropriate that in the lead up to those debates that the President make clear to the American public and make the case to the American public about why the priorities that he's identified for the middle class are also going to be the priorities uh, that he uses to evaluate uh, uh, policy decisions that are contemplated by Congress. All right. Jessica. Josh, in an effort to clarify the state of U.S. assistance okay. to Egypt, would you That's why I'm here. Okay. Would you, dispute the follow, would you dispute the following statement? Okay. Aid is not currently flowing to Egypt, so there is no aid to turn off. Uh, I would dispute that, that statement. Uh, it's my understanding, I'm, I'm not steeped in all the details here, but uh, it is my understanding that there are, Military aid. That there, there are tranches uh, of assistance that, that, uh, that have gone to, uh, to Egypt. So again, this is not part of, there are also some that have been stopped. The biggest ones have been stopped. This is the, this is the, the delay, the delay in the delivery of the F-16s and the cancellation of the, uh, uh, of the uh, joint military exercise known as Bright Star. I think the Department of Defense talked about this a little bit today, that there have been some, uh, in comparison, relatively small packages of assistance that have gone to Egypt. Military aid. So uh, you'd have to talk to the Department of Defense about the nature of that assistance, but we're talking about assistance to Egypt and whether or not it stopped. And while you're right, it's not like a faucet. You can't just twist the dial off and on or turn it up or down or hotter or warmer or colder. But it is evaluated in tranches. And while that, while those, that broader package of, of assistance is under review, there are some smaller packages that have moved forward. So, and would you dispute the assertion that aid has been reprogrammed while this review is underway so that it's in a position to be turned off officially 
if the review decide if, if administration officials decide that's where the the U.S. should be? I'm not sure I understand every word of your question, but I, let me take a couple pieces of this. It's, I, it's my understanding that the use of the word reprogram is not accurate. I know that's been some of the reporting, but I don't think that's accurate. Um, I think there are others who have suggested that one of the things the administration is doing is trying to preserve some flexibility so that the outcome of that review can present the president with a range of options. Uh, that, that, I think that would probably be maybe a more accurate way of describing this than, than what you have so posed in your question. So it would be accurate to say that you, the U.S., as we speak, continues to flow military aid to Egypt? Well, again, you use the word flow, and I've said okay, that several times now. But that's to provide not a, a, military aid to Egypt as we speak. Well, I think that's the same thing of saying that we haven't cut up. It's, it's uh, inaccurate to suggest that we've cut off aid to Egypt. I, we, can, we can go round and round on this. I'm trying to be as clear and candid as I can. Even you're not confirming that we're, not, we're currently providing military aid to Egypt. Again, because it's not like the faucet is turned on, right? It's, we it's not. That, the faucet is not turned on because it's not a faucet. What we are doing on a, on a regular basis is we are considering individual tranches of assistance. And I just asked if it's currently going there, if there's currently aid being provided, and you said yes. Uh, and, and no, no, no. I think, what I, I think what I said, well, we can go to the transcript a little later. What, what I'm trying to suggest to you is that there is a broader review that's underway of our assistance and aid relationship with Egypt. And that aid and assistance is not a faucet that's turned on or turned off. What it is, it is a package of tranches, a series of tranches. Some and each of those things, each of those things is evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis based on the criteria that I laid out for our national interest, our compliance with the law, and the actions of the Egyptian government. So this is a review that is ongoing and it is done on a case-by-case -case basis as we need to evaluate each of these tranches. So it's hard for me to say whether or not that aid is current. You're not stating that aid is currently going to Egypt. You won't affirmatively. You find you will not affirmatively state that. What the reason is? The reason I will. The reason I think that is the wrong way to describe our position is because it's not a situation. It's not a question of whether or not it's happening right now, right? The question not is. The, the, well, <laughs> maybe that's the question for Wolf Blitzer. It's not the question for me. The question for me is, is the United States reviewing our aid to Egypt? We are. Is that assistance, does that mean that you are no longer going to provide assistance to the Egyptians? It does not mean that. Officially. Officially, what do you mean? <laughs> okay. I, 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 I don't understand your question. You're saying that there will be an ultimate determination made. There will. Right. We're asking will. what's happening in the interim period. Okay. Well, and I think that's a legitimate question. Um, the fact that we are in interim period should make, that you're acknowledging that we're in an interim period, should make you skeptical of reports that we've cut off aid to Egypt. That's what the reports indicate right now, and I would encourage you to be skeptical But that's of that. a straw man, Josh. Nobody, nobody, no, has, it's not. nobody has asked you. That's exactly what the reports say. Well, they say that they've been cut off to Egypt. But nobody in this and that's room. Not, and that's not an accurate representation of what our posture is. Understood. But nobody in this room has, has posed the question that way. I think the question that most people are trying to ask is, have there been instances in this interim period during the period of review, have there been interest in instances and will there be instances in which tranches of aid that would have gone out without a, without a review are now not going to go out or being held back or delayed okay. or put on pause or whatever phrase you want to put so that it doesn't rob the president of whatever flexibility he may want. Sure. I mean, is that, is that kind of thing happening? Well, let me, let me sh see if I can take a run at saying this more Sorry, guys, concisely. No, no, it's please. all right. I think you're being a helpful contributor to the conversation here, so <laughs> welcome it. The comment box will be available after the briefing. <laughs> you can deposit them there. What I would say to you is this. As I mentioned in answer to Jessica's question, whether tranches of aid have gone out since the announcement of this review, the Department of Defense announced earlier today that the answer to that question is yes. I don't know the nature of that assistance. You should ask them about that. So uh, if you want to know what's happening in this interim period while there's an ongoing review, at least some assistance has gone out. 
The other thing I can confirm for you is that because we have not made a decision to cut off aid to Egypt, it is possible that additional tranches of aid could go out. But that's something that's being evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, and again, it's hard for me to say that we're switching it on and switching it off because, it's, again, it's not like a faucet, but it is a, an ongoing review of specific tranches of aid. And that's where we, that's where we stand. Is that clarifying? <laughs> but can you answer? At least a little? Josh, can you ask sure, Senator Leahy, though, to try it this way? Senator Leahy's aide says, quote, the transfer of military aid was stopped. True? Uh, and I've said that that's not true. That's that not we've true. not. So Senator Leahy's wrong. It's, under, strong, it's under a review. Well, again, I haven't seen his whole statement, so I'm not going to make a declaration like that. What I'll tell you is um, that the, our aid is, continues to be under review. And to suggest that that aid has been cut off is inaccurate, and because that review has not been concluded. Why won't the administration say that it was a coup, since there was a democratically elected person? Mm -hmm. uh, he was running it. People were not happy with what he's doing, but he had been elected. The military came in and knocked him out of office and put him in prison. Why is that not a coup? Uh, what we have said, Ed, is that we, it is the view of this administration that a determination about a coup, about whether it occurred or not, is not a determination that uh, is in the best interest of the United States. That what we are going to do is we're going to set aside this decision about whether or not a coup, a coup occurred and evaluate our ongoing relationship with Egypt in a way that maximizes the national security interests of the United States of America. This is an administration that prides itself on transparency. Why not I'm being be transparent with you, Ed, about you the fact. You are now, perhaps. But, uh, um, and I have been for a week. I answered this question well, I'm, six I'm days ago. I'm not suggesting that you have not. Okay. Been. But why won't the administration writ large be transparent with the American people and the world when they, the entire world can see military came in, took right. out a democratically elected uh, president? Mm -hmm. so and what I'm saying to you is something that is available to anybody who seeks an answer to this question, which is that we have made the determination that making a decision about whether or not a coup occurred is not in the best interest of the United States. We're, we've been very candid about that. We've been candid about our posture related to aid and assistance. We delayed the delivery of, of, of F-16s. That is a decision that was announced publicly. We canceled a joint military exercise known as Bright Star. That is an announcement that the President himself made uh, in Martha's Vineyard last week. Uh, at the beginning of July, the President announced publicly that our review and uh, that our aid and assistance relationship with Egypt was under review. We have made these announcements and these decisions uh, public, uh, and we've explained to them, explained to you and to your viewers, why these decisions were made and why these actions were taken. A couple of other quick ones. Um, what do you say to our allies uh, like Israel and Saudi Arabia that are saying that they are backing uh, the military government and that the U.S. should be backing? the military government in Egypt because they're going to bring stability. Maybe not today, but in the long run, mm -hmm. um, they're bringing stability. What do you say to our allies? Uh, well, what I would say to anybody who asks is that we have expressed our strong concerns, in fact, our condemnation, about the uh, failure of the interim government in Egypt, the one that you were referring to, to respect basic human rights. In fact, they went beyond just disrespecting those rights and actually perpetrating terrible violence against many peaceful protesters. That is something that this administration is, and the President himself is deeply concerned by. The, the, there are a range of reasons why we're deeply concerned about that, but one of them is this is a government that took power promising a prompt transition back to a democratically elected civilian government through an inclusive political process. The killing of peaceful protesters is not in line with a promise to transition back to a democratically elected civilian government. So uh, our concerns are that this interim government is not living up to the promises that they made just six or eight weeks ago. Uh, last one on the NSA. Uh, the Guardian newspaper, following on everything that was discussed yesterday, um, uh, British, uh, the Guardian is saying that British authorities destroyed several hard drives uh, that, uh, because they wanted to keep secrets that Edward Snowden had leaked from actually getting out. They were, they were stored in the Guardians. Uh, they had some hard drives there at their offices. The British authorities went in there and destroyed these hard drives. Did, you get a he did the American government get a heads up about that, the way you did uh, about um, the person being detained? I've seen the, the, published re the published reports of those accusations, but I don't have any information and for you on that. Does the U.S. government think it's appropriate for 
um, what, to, for a government, especially one of our allies, to go in and destroy hard drives? Is that I, something this administration I'll, I'll, would do? The only thing I know about this are the, you know, are, um, are the public reports about this, so it's hard for me to evaluate the propriety mm -hmm. of what they did the, based on incomplete knowledge of what happened. This would not do that. would not go into an American media company um, and destroy hard drives, even if it meant trying to protect national security. You don't think? Uh, that's very difficult to imagine a scenario in which that would be appropriate. Okay. Major. Well, well, I am going to get back to the background here, so stay on your toes back there. We're nearing the end of a fiscal year. Is the, is the administration also reviewing, because this is a long-standing relationship with Egypt, it which is. has a dollar amount that's been relatively stable <coughs> for many, many years, about one and a half billion dollars. As it puts together and looks toward any foreign operations appropriations bill for the next fiscal year, do you want less money to go to Egypt? And is that something that's also under review, not just what's an existing law, but when may come to the president for his signature in the next three to four months. Mm -hmm. Well, I can tell you that part of this review involves careful and close consultation with leaders in Congress. We've heard a variety of opinions expressed by members of Congress about how best to manage the ongoing situation in Egypt. And we certainly, some of those opinions have been communicated pretty forcefully. But certainly, it's appropriate for them to do so, given the role that Congress has to play here. So part of this review is, that a is question really going forward because there's a lot more money in the out months as opposed to what little remains in this fiscal year. Well, our ongoing aid and assistance relationship with Egypt is absolutely a, a question, and it's something that is under careful review. And that review, as you rightly point out, uh, it includes consultation with leaders in Congress. On future assistance. Yes. The president also well on, also on future assistance. Right. The President can also exert some influence on international monetary fund lending and mm -hmm. the general question of financial investment in Egypt. On those points, what is the President's current posture? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, is this a good investment climate? Is this a place that ought to receive IMF loans, which the United States is a significant player? Mm -hmm. Well, the United States is the, the largest donor to the IMF. So, the, uh, and I believe that we actually exercise some veto authority over some decisions that are made at the IMF because of that status. Um, I know that the IMF, you have to talk to the IMF about their uh, evaluation of the political climate there and what impact that would have on assistance they may provide to Egypt. But even a novice like me, I think, would observe that, uh, that what's happening there right now is probably not good for that evaluation that's ongoing. Um, I think the same would be true of, uh, of foreign investment. That is a critical part of the strength of the Egypt economy. And they depend on foreign companies making a decision to invest in that, in that country. I'm the last person to give investment advice. But again, uh, companies are going to evaluate the political climate of a country when they're making these investment decisions. Uh, and the impact that those investment decisions could have on the Egyptian economy uh, are significant. Because I'm going to take the bait on the student loan thing. The President made some Thank references you. to that in the State of the Union. Will he go beyond the, th the statements he made in the State of the Union, and will this require additional spending? Uh, I don't want to get too far ahead of his announcements, and you, we will have at some point some of our policy experts who can brief you on the, the, State of the, on Union. the details of these proposals. So what I will tell you is that there will be proposals beyond what the President rolled out in the State of the Union that will be included in the President's remarks this week. Does the President believe that one of the reasons college tuition is going up is because there is a sort of arms race in the federal assistance? That is to say, there's more federal assistance, therefore tuition goes up, there's more federal assistance to compensate for that. Mm -hmm. And for parents who are trying to keep up, they continuously fall behind. Well, you uh, are identifying something that the President has talked about a little bit before publicly, which is this idea that we need to rearrange the incentives a little bit, that maybe there's a way for us to align, align the, the incentives with uh, colleges focusing on reducing costs for students, or at least limiting the rapid growth in those costs. So the President has some ideas about how we can better align federal assistance with uh, a commitment on behalf of colleges to keep costs low for students. And that will be part of something that we'll, the President will talk about this week. Let's also address some recent uh, audit evaluations that the federal government has now replaced the banks as a collector of a lot of interest and profits, if you will, from student loan operations. Mm -hmm. Well, I know one of the chief accomplishments of the President's first term was finally getting, uh, eliminating subsidies that were paid to big banks so that they would provide student loans. Uh, and what that did was that freed up a, a, a lot of additional money uh, to expand 
uh, educational assistance to students all across the country. That is a significant accomplishment of this president and something that he campaigned on and delivered in his first term. Uh, I don't know if, uh, well, I'll encourage you to stay tuned uh, about whether or not the president has more to say about that uh, later this week. Okay, I'm gonna move around just a little bit. Let's see here. Hmm, Steve? Yeah, um, before uh, going to Martha's Vineyard, Sanjay Gupta had an interesting column in CNN about marijuana, he changed his mind. Uh, he had been at one point considered by the president to be the Surgeon General of the pick a number of years ago. Wondering if the White House uh, had any reaction to that column and also if, there, if the president has been personally looking at that issue, given that uh, the country's the, poll, uh, the polls on marijuana have changed quite a bit since he took office in favor of legalization. Is there any change in his sort of outlook on it? Steve, when I call on you, I don't think I could ever have predicted that this was the question you were going to ask me. <laughs> so I really was into the, the potpourri category of questions for this one. I have to confess I did not see the, the Sanjay Gupta column that you're referring to, so it's hard for me to comment on it uh, at this point. So oh, we'll have to take the question. Okay. Peter? Guys, if I can quickly, the Egyptian Prime Minister today, Josh, says that he doesn't fear civil war in Egypt. Does the President fear civil war in Egypt? Well, the President is very concerned about the violence that we've seen in Egypt. Uh, and it seems to be um, uh, particularly the violence that is emanating from, uh, from government sources, from government soldiers and government security officials. Uh, that is uh, something that the President is very concerned about. And he talked about in his statement on Thursday about the responsibility that the government has to protect its citizens and to protect the basic human rights uh, of the citizens that they are there to govern. So uh, that, is the, that is the violence that the President is concerned about. And he's certainly, uh, he and other senior administration officials here are concerned about that violence spreading and the destabilizing impact it could have not just within Egypt, but within the region. I hope this will conclude the conversation about tranches, but one final thought about that topic, which is that we know we've discussed Bright Star, we know we've discussed the F-16s mm -hmm. and the cancellation or the delay in terms of the F-16 of that delivery. Are there any tranches, had nothing like what's presently taking place in Egypt taken place, would anything have happened differently? Has anything, absent those examples you've given us, happened differently in terms of the tranches, either being delayed or held for some period of time beyond what would have otherwise occurred? Uh, I hesitate to evaluate the counterfactual that you've set up there, uh, only because my detailed knowledge of these tranches is limited. Um, so I guess I would encourage you to check with the State Department and Defense Department on that, because they'll have a little bit more detailed knowledge of what kinds of tranches are, uh, are under consideration right now. Fine. In Syria, 30,000 refugees have flooded into Iraq, described by humanitarian aid workers on the ground there. It's one of the biggest waves. This is all over the course of the last five days. They join about, I think it's like approaching two million uh, Syrians who have fled. Are we, is the U.S. getting any closer to its goal of removing Assad from power there? Well, let me say a couple of things about this. The first is the President himself has talked about the uh, about his concern uh, about the refugee situation in countries that neighbor that neighbor Syria. So he's talked about the 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 humanitarian conditions. Um, some of the some of these refugees are living in very difficult conditions. There, some of these are often women and children that we're talking about. We have provided the United States government has provided to other countries in the region significant financial assistance to try to meet some of those humanitarian medical needs that those refugees may need. The President talked about this when he was standing next to uh, the King of Jordan uh, earlier in the spring when we were in Amman. So that's something that the President has spoken out about. He's also talked about the destabilizing impact that these refugee populations could have on these other countries. This is and has been in recent years a pretty volatile region. Uh, and adding this broader shift in refugee populations to that mix only makes the situation more complicated and maybe even more volatile. So we're certainly concerned about the impact of these, uh, of these refugee populations. Uh, and it is a direct result of the violence that the Assad regime has perpetrated against the Syrian people. Are we closer to, getting, uh, are we closer to the goal of getting Assad mm -hmm. out of power? That is a goal that is, that first and foremost, that is the goal of the Syrian people, to have a government that reflects their will. That, that is also, we are providing assistance. That is also the goal of other, uh, of our allies around the world and other countries within the region. Uh, and that is, uh, 
that, that remains the goal, and we continue to provide uh, assistance trying to reach it. Uh, in terms of evaluating sort of where we are on that scale. Have we made progress? Well, I think that there's no doubt that there is a pretty broad international consensus uh, about, uh, about, about Mr. Assad and his regime and his need to leave power and the way in which he's – and, and how the way in which he's conducted himself has delegitimized his authority. So uh, I, I think on that front, yes, some progress has been made, but there's no doubt that what, what's ongoing there continues to be a terrible situation. Let me ask you one other topic domestically, if I can. In the eighth largest city in the United States, San Diego, the mayor there is facing a, a recall effort. There's mediation uh, that we have heard through a series of reports right now. Uh, even Bob Filner himself, the mayor of the city, has conceded that what he did was, quote, inappropriate and wrong. Does the president have any opinion about whether Bob Filner should remain mayor of San Diego? The president hasn't weighed in on this issue, and I haven't talked to him about it. As the leader of the Democratic Party, though, why wouldn't the president choose to weigh in on this issue, as many mm -hmm. other leading Democrats have, as he is a leading Democrat in a major American city committing acts that he concedes to that the president has spoken out against in a series of other I, I haven't spoken to the president about it either. ML. Josh, I want to go back to Egypt to the uh, Prime Minister remarks on Egypt. Uh, mm -hmm. Erdogan claims that Turkish government has proved that Israel uh, was beyond the military court in Egypt. Do you have any response? We strongly condemn the statements that were made by Prime Minister Erdogan today, suggesting that Israel is somehow responsible for recent events in Egypt is offensive, unsubstantiated, and wrong. Statements like these only distract from the urgent need for all countries in the region and, frankly, many leading countries around the world to work together through constructive dialogue to address the fluid and dangerous situation in Egypt. Okay. Jim. Also in Egypt, in that interview uh, with the, with the uh, Prime Minister, he said that, uh, that the goal of the authorities in Egypt to remain to, re to return Egypt to a true democratic government that they are keen to end this transitional period and, and are putting a timetable between six and nine months when they will have elections. Is that a timetable the United States supports, six and nine months? Well, I'm not, I haven't seen the full text of the interview, so it's hard for me to weigh in, uh, other than to observe that the actions that we saw from the interim government at the end of last week and over the weekend are entirely inconsistent with any democratically elected government. You would expect a democratically elected government to be to respect the basic human rights of the people that they're elected to govern, uh, and this uh, this interim government egregious, e egregiously and grievously violated the human rights of of, of innocent protesters, peaceful protesters in Egypt, uh, and that's something that uh, you know the president himself has personally condemned, and is something that uh, continues to be a subject of concern here at the White House and across the administration. Understanding that that is your position on the violence. Mm -hmm. Is there any encouragement in these words, again, the Egyptian government saying that they intend to hold elections within six to nine months? Is that an encouraging sign for well, the administration? I think at this point we're going to evaluate the, uh, the position of the interim government when it comes to democracy based on their actions, not on their words. Uh, and that would include, as a very first preliminary step, beginning to respect the basic human rights of the Egyptian people uh, and to at least signal a transition to an inclusive political process. Does that mean release of prisoners? Uh, and that would include ending the politically motivated detention of, of individuals in Egypt. And then Go ahead, Jim. Another, another statement that he made, which seemed to be on the other end of, uh, of, of encouraging, mm -hmm. is, uh, is that he said that, uh, the, that the Egyptian army would survive without United States support and reminded the world that at one point the Egyptian people went with the Russian military. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the response of the American government on that? Well, I did see, I did see part, of the, part of that interview, that section of the interview, and I think he made reference to, um, to the impact of, uh, of canceling USAID being bad for the military. Um, I would say a couple of things about this. Our relationship, the United States, the relationship between the United States and Egypt is a deep and multifaceted one. Uh, they have been allies with the United States for quite some time, and there are deep ties between the American people and the, Egyptians, and the Egyptian people. That there are Egyptian Americans in this country today who are concerned about the safety and well-being of their family members in Egypt. 
So there is a lot at stake that the United States has in this situation, particularly because we are genuinely interested in the success of Egypt. That's one of the reasons that we have this deep aid and assistance relationship that we've talked about so much today. The United States seeks a thriving, growing, stable Egypt. And some of the actions that we've seen from the interim government do not contribute to that stability and to a nation that's thriving. So I think the other point that I would want to make here is that the relationship between the U.S. and Egypt goes beyond just the aid and assistance that we're providing. That our actions here in the U.S. will have an impact on the foreign investment decisions that are made by countries around the globe that are looking to, or at least that are considering an investment in Egypt. The relationship between the United States and Egypt is going to have some bearing on those investment decisions. The same can be said of the IMF decision and the, the decision at the IMF to support the Egyptian economy. The relationship between the United States and Egypt is going to have some bearing on the outcome of that decision. Tourism is a key component of the Egypt economy. The relationship between the United States and Egypt is going to have some bearing on the decision of thousands of people who are considering whether or not to travel to Egypt to view the antiquities there. So there are a whole range of ways in which the relationship between the United States and Egypt will have an impact on the success of Egypt. And what we are oriented toward is a set of policies and a relationship that will uh, solidify the relationship between the United States and, e and Egypt and the broader success uh, of the nation and the people of Egypt. Just one final thing on the yes. on Bo Biden. The White House put out a, kind of a rare statement on, on Bo Biden yesterday. I presume because the Vice President had traveled to Houston. That's right. Um, is, the, is the Vice President, has the Vice President had to change any schedule? Do you expect him back in Washington today? What, is, what can you give us about that now? Uh, I don't have any updates about the Vice President's schedule. I know that, the, that his staff is committed to keeping you, uh, all of you, updated on his uh, travel arrangements and on his schedule for the remainder of the week. For example, I know that uh, the, the Vice President is currently scheduled to, uh, to join the President in Scranton, Pennsylvania for uh, an event on the college tour. Uh, there's one other thing I can tell you about this, which is that the, the President had the opportunity to speak on the telephone with the Vice President over the weekend uh, on this topic. Uh, in that telephone call, the President uh, offered his uh, good wishes um, to Bo uh, and told the Vice President that, uh, that Bo and the rest of the Biden family would be in his thoughts and prayers. Uh, I can also tell you that a lot of people uh, all across the country woke up with uh, Bo Biden on their mind and in their prayers. And I can tell you that that's true of just about everybody that I spoke to at the White House today, too. Yeah. Okay. Roger. Yeah, thanks. Uh, switch to the Miami Dolphins. We <laughs> took a question yesterday about how this came about, whose idea was it? Mm -hmm. What did you find out? Well, I have to admit, Roger, that uh, I'm not the only person who's not exactly sure how this, uh, how this event came to be. I talked to a couple other folks and didn't get an answer on this, uh, but I'll, I'll I'll do some more digging and see what I can come up with for you. Did it come? Okay. Did the request come from the Dolphins? Uh, I, I, again, I don't, I don't know exactly how this uh, how this exactly started, but we're certainly excited about the event this afternoon. Josh. April. Um, Josh, uh, since you're talking about the president and the college tour, uh, well, the tour that he's having and and uh, college is one of the issues, and how college makes many persons middle class for the middle class status. There's an issue right now where HBCUs are very concerned and have petitioned the president for a meeting and petitioned the Department of Education about something called the Parent Plus Loan. It's a federal loan mm -hmm. that has now had strict requirements where parents are now uh, being rejected <coughs> and many schools are losing money. Um, apparently, um, if you have a blemish on your credit report over the last five years, you are not getting that loan. Mm -hmm. What is the president saying about this? Is he planning on meeting with these university presidents? And what is the edu education department going to do about this? Well, I'm not, I'm not aware of the specific uh, meeting request, but I can certainly take a look into it. The president uh, and this administration uh, have been strong supporters of historically black colleges and universities all across the country. Funding for those, uh, for those colleges and universities has increased under President Obama. 
uh, and the President was pleased to have the opportunity earlier this spring to speak at the commencement um, uh, at, at Morehouse College down in, in Atlanta. So the record, the, the President's record on these issues, uh, he, has, he, has a, he has a bias in favor of, of historically black colleges and universities because of the service they provide and because of the quality education that they provide to their students. Uh, in terms of this issue with the uh, parent plus loan, I'm not familiar with this specific policy issue, but we can try to find somebody uh, here at the White House who is a little more conversant in the issue who could talk to you about it. Let me clarify something. It's okay. not just HBCUs as well. We understand a million students from mainstream colleges are not able to go back to school because their parents have blemishes on their credit report mm -hmm. and they're not getting this loan. And it's, um, it's a couple hundred thousand kids mm -hmm. from HBCUs. So okay. this is a, an across the board issue, okay. but HBCUs are really being hurt by it. Okay. Well, let us, uh, let me have somebody in, a, uh, in DPC get in touch with you and we can walk through sure. where Josh, we are on that you issue. The uh, AP is crossing that there's going to be a cabinet level meeting this afternoon here at the White House to discuss this Egyptian aid issue. Is that true? Yeah. Uh, the president will will convene a National Security Council meeting uh, with uh, principals in the in the on his national security team to talk about this issue. So the the president convenes these kinds of meetings on a regular basis, but that will be the topic of so today's. So pivotal do you think, in the range, so as not to overplay it or underplay it. Mm -hmm. You said this has been under review for some time. For the president to be involved with cabinet level officials suggests that we're getting closer to a, to a decision. Where, where would you categorize mm -hmm. it? Uh, well, what I would say is that, this, that, that, that these kinds of national security meetings are not uncommon. Uh, the President does chair them on a pretty regular basis. Uh, and I'm sure that it's not even the first one that they've had on this topic. Um, uh, at this point, I, I wouldn't anticipate any major announcements related to our aid and assistance in the immediate aftermath of this meeting. What time is that NSC meeting? Uh, I believe it's at 2.30. Uh, we can double check on that for you. Yeah, Anita? Um, just switching topics a little to the looming fiscal issues of next month. Uh, before Congress left, there were some meetings between the Chief of Staff, a series of behind the scenes meetings with some Republican senators. The President, I think Jay had told us, spoke briefly to the Speaker before they, he left. But where are we? Has there been progress? Are those meetings still ongoing? And, and sort of where are we when they come back in three weeks? Well, I don't, I don't know that there are any meetings I have to read out to you. Members of Congress are scattered across their country in their home districts. So I don't, I don't have any specific meetings to read out to you. Uh, you know, I know that our position on this is, uh, is something that we've articulated to you in a variety of, of, of forums. Um, the, I think I would, it would suffice it to say that threatening to shut down the government uh, would have a terrible impact on our economy. Uh, and the President is focused on putting in place policies that will be good for the middle class and be good for our economy. And, you know, like I said, threats to under, threats to shut down the government would only undermine the economic recovery that's starting to gain some traction. Thanks, Josh. Has the Chief of Staff, though, continued talking to those senators that he was speaking to or talking to? I don't those? have any specific calls to read out to you, but the lines of communication remain open. Yeah. Zeke, I'm going to give you the last one. Uh, you said before that the biggest uh, tranches of aid have been stopped, including the uh, the, uh, the, airplane, the air, aircraft sale as well as the military exercises. Is it safe to say that any other large tranches of aid will be stopped going forward as they have been over the past you know, five, six weeks? I think what's safe to say is that we're evaluating these tranches based on, on, on a case-by-case -case basis. So we'll evaluate each one. I, I know that it's been publicly reported that there is at some point a scheduled delivery of Apache helicopters coming up. Uh, that's something that uh, the Department of Defense knows more about than I do. Uh, but that is an example of the kind of aid that is currently under review. A decision about the delivery of those helicopters has not been made at this point. Uh, but when it is, uh, we'll make an announcement about that in the same way that we uh, announced a decision on the, the delay in the delivery of F-16s. But what, what, what would have to change on the ground for, the, for those helicopters to be sold? Well, this is something that we're, like I said, evaluated on a case-by-case -case basis, and there's an ongoing review. Right and the context of that review includes actions taken by the Egyptian government. Uh, it's hard for me to lay out, like, specific criteria, if this, then this, but I can observe for you generally that continued violations of basic human rights uh, don't make the transfer of that aid more likely. Okay. All right, Alexis, last one. Could you please, um, just, just to follow up to mop up, has the President made any calls since he got back from vacation to either lawmakers or other heads of state to discuss Egypt and aid? Uh, not that I'm prepared to read out this time. But okay. it's possible? Uh, well, of course it's possible, but uh, not, nothing that I'm prepared to announce this time. Thanks, everybody. Have a good afternoon. Enjoy the Dolphins.